God bless you and welcome back to the Triad Room, Jehovah Rapha, where sin is a sickness and Christ is the cure. This video is entitled, Am I Called or Chosen for Ministry? Am I Called or Chosen for Ministry? Now, this video actually is a continuation of a video I made some months ago entitled, How Do I Know If I'm Called or Anointed for Ministry? Both these two videos actually uh, dovetail each other. So if you haven't seen the earlier video, I'll leave a link at the end of this one so you can watch it if you choose to do so. Now, as Christians, um, we're always trying to find out what our ministry is in the body of Christ. And I use the word ministry deliberately, and I'm referring to the fivefold ministry. You know, many of us, if we don't know where we fit into the body of Christ in terms of ministry. We want to know, have I been called to be an apostle? Have I been called to be an evangelist? Have I been called to be a prophet? Um, have I been called to be a pastor? Have I been called to be a teacher? The five four ministries. In addition to that, we want to know um, what are the, 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 the gifts of the spirit over our lives? What has God endowed us, empowered us with? Um, do we have uh, the gift of... Um, of healing, miracles, discernment, um, word of wisdom, word of knowledge. You know, we want to know where do we fit? What are the gifts? And sometimes we can become so fixated on wanting to know what our ministries are and what the, 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 the gifts of the Spirit is or are that we take our eyes off the fruits of the Spirit, which in my opinion is more important. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, those things. So as we seek out our ministries and we seek out uh, the gifts of the Spirit. Let us not forget the fruits of the Spirit. But let's focus on the title of this video. Matthew 22 verse 14 says, For many are called, but a few are chosen. And I don't want to use this verse of Scripture out of context. Let me give you a quick background to this Scripture, where it comes from. In Matthew 22, it speaks of a king whose son was having a wedding. And the king sent out invitations to various people to come to this, his son's wedding. And one by one, the invited guests made excuses as to why they could not come to the wedding. And the king was so angry that these people made excuses and, and prioritized other things over this, his son's uh, wedding that he said to his servants, go into the, the towns and, and the nearby villages and invite anyone you come across, whether they be good or bad. So the servants went out and issued new invitations to people who weren't in initially invited to the wedding. And they came all dressed um, in their wedding um, apparel and clothing. Apart from this one man who came in his uh, formal dress and he was duly thrown out of the wedding. Now the, this parable is an analogy of the differences between those that are called and those that are chosen. Now, those that are called are those who receive the invitation from the king, but they either rejected the invitation or prioritized other things over the invitation. While those who are called in this context not only received an invitation, they made themselves available and they attended the wedding. That's the difference. That's the difference. So, if you believe you're called and you have doubts on whether you're chosen, let me just make this clear. Your response to the call can and will determine whether you are chosen. Let me give you a scriptural example. Matthew 4 verse 18 to 22. I won't read it. When Jesus was looking for his disciples, his first two disciples were two brothers, Peter and Andrew. And the Bible says Jesus is walking on the, 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 the coast of Galilee. And Peter and Andrew, fishermen, were, were preparing their nets to fish. And Jesus said unto them in uh, Matthew 4 verse 19, Come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And verse 20 is so powerful of Matthew chapter 4. It says this, At once they left their nets and followed him. So Jesus issued a call, come follow me. The response was in verse 20, at once, immediately, without hesitation, they dropped their nets and they followed him. 
and they became disciples of Christ that day because they responded to the call in such a dramatic fashion without hesitation that they became disciples. Isaiah, look at Isaiah, the, the, the great prophet, Isaiah 6 verse 8, verse 8. Isaiah said, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Whom will go for us? This is, this is Isaiah's response. Then said I, Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. He heard the call and his response was positive. His response was, Yes, here I am, send me. Another thing that distinguishes those that are called from those that are chosen is attitude. Attitude, your attitude. Um, they say that your attitude determines your altitude, how far you'll go. And if you remember Jonah, Jonah, his, his initial response or attitude when God uh, said to him, go and speak to Nineveh, um, Jonah's attitude was wrong. He thought that the people of Nineveh weren't deserving of God's grace, mercy or repentance. So he said, you know what, mm -mm. I'm going to disobey the, the call and head south to Tarshish, a, a, a town in, in, in a, or a coastal town in Spain. Moses, Exodus 4 verse 10, likewise, when God called him and said, I want you to go and speak to Pharaoh, tell him to let my people go. Moses' initial attitude was wrong. He made excuses. He said, Lord, I'm not eloquent. I'm slow of speech. You know, I'm slow of tongue. So his attitude to the call, initial call was wrong. And he could have, as it were, um, excluded himself from the call, from the mission because of his attitude. But thanks be to God, God both used both Jonah, sorry, and also used Moses because they changed their attitude. They changed their response in, this, in the end and God used them mightily in both instances. So if you believe you're called, okay, to get to the next level of being chosen, you gotta watch your response. You have to watch your attitude. You really have to watch your attitude because if your response is wrong, and your attitude is wrong, you can sabotage what God has for you. Romans 8 verse 29 speaks of whether we are called or not. And it says this, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brothers and sisters. Listen to verse 30 of Romans 8. It says, and those he predestined, he also called those he called he also justified those he justified he also glorified the term uh, for new simply means before it happened and the word predestined simply means um, the determined in advance by divine will or fate and to summarize it better a uh, Jeremiah 1 verse 5 says or speaking of the prophet Jeremiah before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So let there be no doubt that before you were born, before sperm met egg <laughs> in the womb, God's hand was upon your life. He set you apart for a particular work. He called you and he has chosen you before time to do a particular work or job in the kingdom for his glory. Now we have to be mindful that when the Macedonian call comes, that our response is yes and positive. That our response is here am I Lord, send me here my lord use me don't let it be an attitude of oh i'm too good for them you know they are beneath me i won't go there you know or like moses i haven't got the qualifications you know i am the wrong type of person i'm a man or a woman i'm too old too young you know my color is wrong you know let us not find excuses but let it be, yes, yes, Lord, hear my, use me, hear my, Lord, send me. 
That's the difference between those that are called and those that are chosen. We have the right response. We have the right attitude. So stay faithful to the calling over your life. Stay faithful. You know, wait, wait and be patient on God, but be faithful. So when the call comes for someone to go over and preach, teach, whatever it may be, that you are ready. You're ready and you're willing. And your answer will be yes, Lord, yes. May God bless you. May God keep you until next time. God bless. Dear viewer, if you've been challenged by this message and would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations, you've been born again. My advice to you would be to find a Bible-believing fellowship to continue your walk with God. May God bless you. May God keep you. Until next time.